Hi, how you doing? And welcome back to So You Want to Learn Cyber Series. This video we're going to be looking at installing Nessus Essentials on Kali Linux. Now, Nessus Essentials, or Nessus in general, is a vulnerability scanner. Uh, it can scan a number of different systems and devices and things for vulnerabilities. Um, but the good thing about Nessus is when it's done the scan, the information that it comes back with, the output of the scan, gives us a lot of information. Um, it can give us um, a, a description of the vulnerability, it'll give us the CVE, um, it will give us the uh, MITRE ATT&CK information for it, and critically, it'll give us the mitigations for it. Um, and you can use Nessus for a couple of different reasons. We're going to be looking at Nessus Essentials, which is the free license version. Um, I've got my little friend here um, on the floor with me, um, and he's currently playing with his ball. So if you hear some noise, excuse me, live, not the whole world doesn't want to hear you playing with your ball, okay? It's a very nice ball, but yeah, just, uh, you know... Turn the volume down a little bit. Okay, cool. We do have these conversations. Um, so if you're on the blue side of the fence, we can use Nessus um, for defensive purposes, yeah? To protect our own environment. We look for vulnerabilities in our systems and apps and things. Um, but critically, we're looking for the mitigations that we can use to, to remediate those uh, vulnerabilities. Um, and if you're not in a, in a, in a role um, where you do that for a job, um, for a living, um, then it's great for labbing. So exactly what I do, I have it in labs um, to practice um, scanning. Uh, it helps me look at the, uh, the MITRE ATT&CK framework, see how things fit in. Yeah. Um, there's a load of information about the, the actual vulnerabilities to, to get that into you. Um, but you can also use it to practice and develop your system hardening techniques. So you can install a vulnerable um, machine, a vulnerable VM or something like that, um, scan it, and then practice the techniques and the mitigations to, to actually harden that machine, scan it again. Have you got rid of it? Have you introduced more vulnerabilities by doing that? See how things work. If you're on the um, naughty side of the fence, the old red side, um, then you can use it to find vulnerabilities, but for different purposes, if you know what I mean. Yeah, um, you can look for um, attack vectors into different systems. And again, when you're looking at the MITRE ATT&CK framework and the information it'll give you regarding that, you can use that whilst you're mapping out your attack method, yeah? Um, and again, looking at the mitigations. What are people going to be doing to, you know, if you, if you find vulnerabilities in, in your lab environment, what are people going to be doing to mitigate these, these, these vulnerabilities? Are there way around those mitigations? Are those mitigations going to introduce other vulnerabilities or other attack vectors that you can manipulate? Yeah. Um, or as I've put there, to um, yeah, to <laughs> to to research what might be in place on other systems to thwart your attack. I've no idea where where I come up with that, but sounds good to me. Um, and Nessus also um, can, and we, we, we may look at it in, in future videos, um, it can do things like brute forcing using Hydra. So if you've got passwords that you need to get around, you know, you, with a word list, you can go and uh, brute force that password. Uh, Nessus can also scan web apps. Um, now, it does depend on how much you're willing to pay um, Tenable, the company who produce Nessus for their various licenses. They do three three versions, the free one, the pro version and the expert version, all at different prices. And the free one is the best because it's free. 
Um, and you can run TCP, um, SYN scans, UDP scans, stuff like that. Um, you can tailor these scans to what you want. Now, I know there's going to be people out there going, hang on a minute, Rich, why are you downloading this? When you know, If you want to do a TCP or a SYN scan or a UDP scan, Nmap will do that for you. And we'll do Nmap in another video. But yes, it will. However, Nessus is, when it does its scans, the, the information it gives you back is far more in depth than what um, Nmap's going to give you. And it's nice, it's graphical, it's all funky monkey. So, let's go take a look. Um, and whilst we're, uh, we're just getting set up, we're getting the screens up, you know the drill, and now's the time to go um, lovely jubbly. Enough waffle, let's get on with it. Let's get rid of that. And here I am in my lovely little Kali Linux installation, my VM. So we'll go and have a look. Now, conveniently, I've brought up the um, Tenable Nessus um, website. I say Tenable is a company that, uh, that produces um, Nessus. Uh, the Global Gold Standard and Vulnerability Assessment built for the modern attack surface. And it is. Um, here's the two versions that they, they, they like to push, which are obviously their paid ones. And if you go and visit tenable.com slash product slash Nessus, you can go and have a look at um, all the different features that's available and then the prices. Um, there's loads of information on here. Yeah, you can actually run Nessus on a Raspberry Pi. Um, uh, have I done? I think I did do. I think I installed it just to see if it worked um, and it was fine. Um, but what we're going to do is have a look at downloading it. Now, if you go and Google Nessus, um, you will come across a page that says enter your details. And what it'll try and do is email you a license uh, or sorry, an activation code. Um, and you have to wait for that to come through and then it'll send you to the download page. We're going to bypass that a little bit um, and we'll go straight to the download page. Now. You might be going, oh, what's that link? Let me let me let me scribble that down. Don't don't worry about the link because what we have over here is um, a blog post to go with it, uh, and this is the exact walkthrough that we're going to be doing today. All the lovely screenshots showing you exactly what's going to be happening, what's going on. Um, I did this blog back in July, um, as it says up here. Um, and today I'm doing the video simply because, again, people learn in different ways. People might not want to sit there and scroll through pages of text and pretty pictures. They may want some idiot waffling to death to them through the screen. Either way, but um, the links and everything, all the commands, everything that you're going to need are in this blog post. And the link is down below. So whilst you're clicking on the subscribe and the thumbs up button, um, It'll be in that area, so you can you can find that. Uh, and as I say, that's exactly what I'm going to be walking through. So the link for the download takes us to this page, and we can select which version we want. Um, it naturally tries, uh, or will select the most recent edition that it wants you to have. Um, but the key thing is to select our platform. Um, I'm on Kali Linux. Uh, and it's automatically selected the best platform it thinks for me, uh, which is Linux. Great. Ubuntu. And you might be going, ah, but you're on Kali. It's not that good, is it? Yeah, Kali, Ubuntu, it's all Debian. Um, but crucially, it's a 64-bit AMD system that I'm rocking in the background. Um, and you can see it's available for all sorts of weird and wonderful things. You do need to pay attention to whether it's 32 or 64-bit, yeah? To, meet, to match your system. Uh, but I'm on a 64-bit Kali, so it's perfectly fine. Um, and then it's, it's so you, you basically hit the download button um, and it says open Nessus and follow the setup wizard, which we'll do. And the command to, to kick that off is, uh, is in the blog and we'll go through that now. So I'll hit download. Uh, do you accept all this junk? Um, happily read through it if you wish. Um, I agree. If you want to use it, you've got to click I accept. If you don't click I accept, then you can't use it. Simple as. It's a relatively quick download. It should only take 30 seconds. Oh, well, I'll say 30 seconds. 
it should only take a few seconds and there you go it's downloaded so we're going to get rid of this screen minimize that down right so it's downloaded where did it download to do you know downloads folder yeah um now we're on cali yeah it's um you know it's the, the hacker's dream is cali if you if, you, if you're rocking cali that's it you're, you're an instant hacker as soon as you download and install cali you've got the title hacker <laughs> no you haven't seriously but we want to be we want to be cool sexy and, and hackerish so um we're going to be using the command line um because that's what we do from now on and you might sit there and go command line that sounds a bit a bit technical you might not have used the command line before you might be totally proficient in the command line and great um but if not then I've got a, a series that's uh, that I've kicked off called um, Linux Basics, and we go through command line and stuff like that, and how to navigate around it, what to do with it, and different things, uh, and it'll be super useful for you. So once you've um, finished playing with Nessus, pop down and have a look. Um, so what do we do? What do we do? We need to go and get into our downloads folder. So we'll cd downloads and we're in we'll use the list command so i've used the if you if you've not uh, familiar with it i've used the cd which is the change directory command and the argument of downloads so i'm telling the command what i want it to do um, and i'm now going to use the list command to show me what's in that folder and i've not downloaded anything else on this so uh, our nessus file is the only program in there right so the file's there, we need to install it. And funnily enough, there's a command for that. And it is dpkg. And if I don't say it when I type it, I just end up with gobbledygook on the keyboard, uh, on the terminal. I really do. Um, dash i. Um, I'll be perfectly honest, uh, for the life of me, I can't remember what the dash i means at the moment. Um, it's very hot here very warm it's 20 28 degrees in the office here um, so my head's a bit fuzzy so yeah very warm um, however uh, the very cool thing on the command line is um, NASA Ness, Nasus Nessus dash 10 dot 6 dot 0 dash Ubuntu 1404 underscore AMD 64 dot is quite a bit to type so once I've typed Nessus, if I hit the tab key, it should autocomplete because it goes, I know what you want to do. And it's the only file in there that starts with Nessus. So I'll just put the whole file name in and correct all the capitalization for you if you like. And I go, thanks very much. Cheers for that. Um, if it doesn't do that for you, then you just type it out exactly. Um, and uh, you'll notice in the uh, Linux basic series that I'm doing, um, I do stress that case sensitivity is critical on the command line. Yeah. Uh, capital N. Um, so once we've got the file name in there, that's that's the command done. We hit enter and it says error requested operator. Oh, right. OK. Come on, Rich, get it together. I know it's a bit warm. It's a bit warm. It's getting late. It's a bit warm. Um, Requires super user privileges, so I need to escalate my privileges. How do you do that, Rich? So I'm going to use the super user um, account, or like the administrator account version of uh, of, of Linux. Um, so I'm going to use um, super user do, the sudo, and switch user. If I don't give it another argument, um, as in another user name, then it will automatically default to the root user, so the super user, the administrator account. Um, however, I can't just do that, it wants my password. Yeah, so if I've nipped to the loo and somebody's come along and gone, ha ha, nefarious things, blah, 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 and tries to hack in, then they need my password. Um, so it says, watch your password, type my password in. It'll now check: Are you part of the super user group? Can you can you actually you know do you have permission to use the super user, which is root? And apparently I do, which is a good thing. So that's all wonderful. 
Um, I'm trying to go for a command and it's not there because I haven't used it in um, in root before. So dp kg dash i nessus tab boom there's the file name enter now it'll go because I am super user I am hacking god of Linux in my dreams um, well that was rather quick wasn't it and there you go nessus is now installed video done let's all go out for a pint don't be daft not even half the battle not even half the battle we've got it installed so what we need to do is now start Nessus, because all it's done is installed it. Yeah, We need to tell the system to start Nessus, and then we need to go and access Nessus um, to continue the setup. So the um, I've got a lovely little file on my desktop, just to make things a little bit easier. This is the command that we're going to use to start Nessus. I'm going to control C to copy it here. You can't use control C on the uh, terminal because that does something completely different. So it's control shift uh, V to paste. So control C, control shift C to copy, control shift V to paste. Not just control C, control V. Totally different things. Um, and again, this is um, in the blog post. So no need to, to scribble along. We hit enter. Did something happen? Well, me, uh, me, me processors fired up a little bit and my memory's kicked off, so I'm presuming that something's happened in the background. Um, let's get rid of the terminals, just minimise that for now. And let's go and have a look. Um, what I need here is this little link. Dee, 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 dee. Copy that. Go back into our Firefox web browser, open up a new tab, paste that in. So this is going to um, now visit the web portal of the Nessus vulnerability scanner. So this is just saying, go out, we're using um, the, uh, the Tinternet. Um, Kali is our local host because that's my local host name. Um, and if you if you've named your system something completely different, then you could use the standard 127.0.0.1 for the local host. The um, semicolon here tells it that we're now going to give it a port to go and talk to directly, which is 8834, uh, and that's the port that Nessus is uh, is running on. So we hit enter on that, and whoa, warning potential security risk ahead. You'll see this quite a bit in, in the stuff that we install. Because um, <clears throat> we've tried to do HTTPS, um, the SSL certificates can't be verified because they're self-signed um, and Firefox just has no idea what to do with it. Luckily we've got two little buttons. If you hit go back then you're not going to go anywhere forwards. Um, so we need to click the advanced button and it tells you down here, someone could be trying to impersonate the site and you should not continue. Well, look, guys, this is our local system. Yeah, we're, we're going to the local host. So we are talking to our own computer. We know it's not somebody else. Um, if you're out on the interweb and you come across this, then maybe it's something that you should hit go back on. Uh, but in this instance, read the little thing just to see what it says, what it's all about. Um, if you if you want, but we're happy because it's our own computer, so we're going to accept the risk and continue. Boom! We're straight in. Happy days. Welcome to Nessus. You can click the settings to configure the Nessus proxy plugin feed and encryption password settings before you start the installation. Do you know anything about any of that? Mm, I don't know. What's all that malarkey? No idea. I'm just going to hit continue. I'm not going to tick the button. Do not tick the button to register offline. That's if you've gone to their website and you've filled in your details and it's emailed you an activation code. Yeah, We're not doing that. We're just doing it the quick and dirty way. Yeah, Not so much dirty. Maybe easy rather than dirty. But it's a quick and dirty way. We hit continue. Um, so we're still on Welcome to Nessus. Choose how you want to deploy Nessus. Select an option to get started. 
Um, if you've purchased Nessus money bags, um, then you'd select that option to go and in, in, uh, put your license key and they'll, they'll probably give you a different link anyway. But you could um, enter your license key there. You could do trial versions of the expert or the pro if you really want to have a dig around at them. Um, but for this um, instance, we're going to hit the register for Nessus Essentials and we click on the uh, hover on the little um, question mark. Um, and this is the free version of Nessus for educators, students and hobbyists. Well, all three of those categorise me. I'm a hobbyist because I love playing with stuff. Um, I'm a student because I'm learning. Um, and I'm an educator because I'm presenting a video on it. So, yes, totally suited. Um, so we select that option and we hit continue. Now, get an activation code. To register for a free Nessus Essentials activation code, enter your information. I will certainly enter my information Is that my information? Yeah, you don't really have to enter all your personal. You can if you want. Well, that's entirely up to you. Hey, you might get an email from Tenable saying, thanks for downloading and installing Nessus. Do you want to buy our super duper products? Um, but we don't need it. Um, and then we click register. Email hourly limit. Oh, I'll tell you why. Um, I was playing earlier. And um, I've already used this email once. Um, there we go. So now it's um, so if you, you can't keep installing it again and again and again and again and again um, with the same email address, it doesn't like it. So it's gone off. It's connected to the. Um, Tenable servers and said, "Hey, this guy wants to register. Here's all his details." Details. Um, can he do it? It's come back and said yes now. Here's your activation code. Oh my god Rich, what a security issue that is. You've got your activation code in plain text on the screen. Ooh, what an idiot. No, it's just an activation code. It's a single use. Um, this code will never ever be used ever again. Ever, 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 ever. Um, it's simply activation. It's not a license key. Um, it's just an activation code, so it's perfectly fine. That's why I'm not bothered about blurring it out and all that junk. Um, if you um, wanted to reinstall Nessus, you've binned your system, um, forgot to do a snapshot, went to an earlier snapshot, and you've got to go and install it again, you'd have to wait an hour, enter all your details again, and you'll get a new activation code. Um, it, it doesn't do anything apart from just activate the product. It's just to get your details off you. However, this screen, create a user account, we do need to do. Um, so I'm going to give it uh, my username, Rich, nice and easy for me. You can give it whatever username you want. Um, probably not Rich, because you're probably not Rich. Oh, yeah, unless you bought it, then you must be Rich. Um, password. Um, this can be anything you like. Um, I'm going to type my, my lovely super secret usual password in here. Um, but do remember it because you will need it to log back into Nessus at some point. So click the old submit button once you've done that. You could if you want to save it. I don't want to save it. I don't save credentials in uh, web browsers for any reason. Um, I use a password manager. There's a video coming for that. Um, so happy days. That's going to download the plugins. It's going to take mm, two, maybe three minutes, depending on how happy my internet's doing. So in the meantime, I'm going to hit the pause button. I'm going to go and get a drink of water because I am roasting here and we'll be back when it's done. OK, see you in a minute. Took about a minute. Um, and then it's automatically come back to this screen. So it's moved us on and we've got a lovely little pop up. Plugins are compiling. Um, didn't read the rest of that. Downloading, God knows what it said it was doing, but it's doing something. And we're here, we're at this screen, don't be clicking anything, it's not going to work, it's not done. We've got a little spinny wheel, if you can see where my mouse is hovering, 
round and round and round and round in the opposite direction to the spinny wheel. The little um, refresh icon, what it's doing now is it's downloading all of its information, updating all of its records, uh, getting all its scanners downloaded and everything. This will take five to ten minutes. Um, you can see it's rocking my four processor cores and uh, all eight gigabytes of memory that I've allocated to this virtual machine. Um, at some point this is going to disappear and you'll think it's done. Ah, it's finished, Rich. You've got to wait for this new scan button to become um, a diff slightly different colour. At the moment you can't click on it. Um, Mine's turned to a hand now, so it's obviously busy doing stuff. Um, it's maxed out all the resources. Um, but we'll wait for this to finish, and then we'll um, you get a little pop-up, and then we'll wait for this to turn a different colour. In the meantime, um, if you didn't have a chance to grab a drink of water, or a cup of tea, or a sandwich, or walk the dog, uh, now's your chance. All right. So uh, I'll pause the video, and we'll come back when it's done. Okay, see you in a minute. Oh, that took a while, didn't it? Hey, right. So this is literally just popped up. Uh, plugins are done. Compiling up the top here. The little spinny icon's gone. Super duper. Uh, welcome to Nessus Essentials. Um, uh, to get started, launch a host discovery scan to identify what hosts are on your network uh, are available to scan. Hosts that are discovered through a discovery scan do not count towards the 16 host limit on your license. Um, Nessus Essentials does have um, a limit of 16 hosts that it will scan. Yeah. Um, so if you do a discovery scan, that doesn't, and it finds 20. It's not going to go, oh, I did find 20, but I'm only doing 16 because that's the license. Um, no, um, it will scan the whole the whole lot. So it's great when you um, install this into your environment. Uh, let's say on your home network, you've got um, smart speakers, smart lights, smart this, smart that. You can do uh, a scan and it'll scan everything on your network. Um, or your subnet and it's great um, I'm just going to close this for now on the close button um, I'm going to close that little pop up and see the new scan button is now uh, a lighter blue and it's um, we can hover on it and click on it and if I click on the new scan here are your scan templates so there's the host discovery button um, and it's super easy, we click on it um, and we can give it a name, a description of the scan so that the name is not the name of a system or anything that you're scanning it's just the name for the scan so you could call it my home network scan um, description, a scan of my home network um, folder, you can, if you, if you create different folders you could have different folders for different scans obviously pen testers things like that. i'll have a folder for x company y company z company um, and you can put in your targets to scan so you could if you knew the ip addresses of of the the items you could give it individual ip addresses or you can give it a range like 192.168.1.1 dash so from that to 192.168.1.5 or um, you could give it um, a cider, 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 whatever you want to call it. Um, you could give it um, your 192.168.1.0 slash 24 to go scan the whole 256, um, 255, um, 256, if it's starting from zero. Um, IP addresses on the network, and it'll go out, ping each one, and see if it can, um, if it can do it. Um, and that you can schedule that scan, you can have um, email notifications if you set up a SMTP um, discovery link, you can tell it what type of of scans you want to do host enumeration or s identification put just a simple port scan it'll just scan the common ports um, like uh, nmap would do so basically an nmap scan 
um, of all the common ports, so the top thousand and stuff like that, or a full uh, 65,000 something or other ports, I don't remember. Um, or you can do a custom, tell you exactly what you want to do. Uh, don't frown on me for not remembering the 65,000 thing, it's just not something you need to know, is it? Google it. Um, general testing, uh, general settings, so it's uh, always test the local Nessus host, so it'll always do a loopback test as well. Um, use fast network discovery, ping hosts using TCP, ARP and ICMP to retries. Um, the report, you can tell it uh, what to output, um, allow users, these are the defaults, you can add or subtract what you want in the report. And then you've got the advanced, um, all sorts of stuff um, in here. Um, and there are plugins that you can use. Um, so you could start looking for plugins to, 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 to use to save on different scans. Um, so here's your, your, your basic network scan. You've got an advanced scan, so your basic is pretty much the same. Yeah. Um, you've got assessment, what type do you want to look for, um, default if you're just scanning a normal thing. Credentials, so there's the, you can do two types of scan, you can do um, a, a credentialed scan where it'll you give it the login of a, of a, a, a user account and then it'll not only scan the surface of it but it'll then interrogate the system from the inside so as if somebody's hacked in, somebody's got hold of some credentials somehow and it'll do an internal and you can tell it how it what how you should um, let it connect to do that scan whether whether it be via SSH or Windows um, again here's the plugins so the um, discovery scan doesn't have the plugins available but the uh, the other scans do and there's loads of them find plugins to to scan for different things um, so back to there you've got the advanced scan which is basically set it up it looks the same but it's basically set up exactly how you want it there's advanced dynamic scan malware scan you know this thing can do loads um, mobile device scan now it's not available in the essentials that's why it's got the little upgrade banner across it uh, so you would have to pay some money um, to get that to work. Uh, web application tests, so if you've got a web app running you could just fire this at it and have a look at it. There's all sorts, you could do um, scan direct for the, the WannaCry ransomware, different Spectrum Meltdown, Intel AMT Security Bypass, oh, the Print Nightmare vulnerability so you can scan for specific things if you know that your systems liable to these certain threat actors that, that target these vulnerabilities you can just go in and say I don't want to know all the bump about my network I just want to know are we susceptible to the WannaCry ransomware vulnerability run the scan across across your network across your systems um, conti leaks and whatnot compliance Obviously, these down here need some money to get them to work. Um, but that's it. There we go. We've got Nessus installed. Um, if you've been it, reboot your system. What I would suggest is have have a little notepad document somewhere or the link to my blog. Um, just with this command to fire up Nessus next time you want to use it. It's not always constantly running in the background. You do need to start it. You could add it to, to get it to um, enable it to start uh, to, to run at startup if you really want, but you know it's going to be running in the background. Um, do you really want that to happen? Maybe not. Um, and then obviously your link to it would be handy to have in, in the little document somewhere. You don't need these because once you've done it, you've done it and that's it. Um, so that's what I would say is, is have these handy. I always have this little document on my desktop when I have um, Nessus installed just so I can fire it, log into it, and then I'm off. Yeah. Um, but that's it. Um, slightly quicker than normal on the videos. Um, in the next one, we'll look at doing a scan. Um, 
what we can do with the settings and what it's going to give us back a little bit of a, a description to the uh, the output that it gives us so we can see you know just the power of, of Nessus and what it can do for us um, in the meantime um, yeah get it installed why not do a host discovery beat me to the to the line on that um, yeah but check out the blog um, if you want to have the, 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 the follow along um, it's still up to date I know I did, I did it back in July uh, but it's still relevant it's still up to date and the main reason for me doing the blog in the first place was I was following along with some other videos going hang on a minute your screens are completely different to, to mine what's happened and Nessus had done some updates in the, in the meantime so everything that I was looking at was completely different I was like Am I even installing the right program here? So that's why it's a, a slightly more up-to-date version. But happy days, I say. That's all I've got for you for today. The next one, we'll we'll have a, a deeper dive into it and run a scan and see what uh, what it comes back with. Happy days. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's been useful. I hope you can now get Nessus installed on your Kali Linux. If you don't have Kali Linux, go back through the videos. Um, I tell you exactly how to get it and uh, how to get it set up and running. Um, but in the meantime, until the next time we meet, thanks for watching. appreciate your time and I'll see you again. Take care.